Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm here with my friend, Miss Ruby, and she is here to talk to you about traveling through France and other countries with only a backpack on your back for how long? Indefinitely. Indefinitely. You know, so, so two weeks to indefinitely. All right. So what are some of your tips? Well, you know, one of the biggest keys is when you travel light, everything in that backpack must serve at least two functions, maybe more, maybe three functions. For instance, it's well known that I don't wear pants. I'm a skirt girl. I love skirts, especially long skirts. Now, when you're hitchhiking, you're in a long, elegant skirt that is durable but fashionable, you're more apt to get it right. Okay, so that, that's an aid that the skirt gives. As well, you can use your skirt as a towel, okay, to dry yourself off so you don't have to carry a big fluffy towel, which serves really only one purpose. Also, in case you like line up with someone and you want to have sex with them, you can throw your skirt on the ground because you're not wearing it anyway because they're fucking you. And it makes a really nice padding against rough ground, which that's you find in southern France. That's always good to know. So what, what are some of your other tips? Like, um, what about containers in your backpack? I mean, that's got to have a lot of weight. Well, no, uh, I don't take a lot of containers, right. although I do take a good supply of Ziploc bags, the gallon size, the quart size, and baggies, because, you know, it can take, like, wet garments, because mm -hmm. sometimes, like, you get out of the Mediterranean, and you don't have time to dry out your uh, your skimpy things, so you put them up in a Ziploc bag, and then away you go when you get to the youth hostel, or hotel, or chateau of somebody that you picked up in hitchhiking, you're going to find. All right. Then so. you can dry it out on their line. So, yeah, you, so you have hitchhiked as well. I've hitchhiked all, all over. Right. Another real important one is, is cord, very fine cordage, which is strong, because you can always find some two posts to string it across and hang up your laundry. Okay. Or you can tie things off. Like one time I got a ride on this guy's little motorcycle, but because of my fat ass, the, his kickstand was dragging on the ground. Couldn't avoid it. He said, sorry, I'm afraid you, I can't take you the rest of the way. So I whipped out my cordage and I tied up his kickstand which then was about a centimeter off the road, but it worked, and I was able to maintain my ride. I was able to get where I was going because I had cordage on me, and there's other such functions. I also carry epoxy, zip ties, duct tape, all the little things to repair and make things in your environment so you don't have to take them from home. Now can, now can you make a makeshift tarp say if it's raining outside with some of these Thing. That could be a problem, but you know what? You can always grab like a painter's tarp. It's like super ultra thin plastic. It weighs almost nothing. It's kind of good for one use, but you can take it. In my med kit, I carry those little heat pads that you can smack and then they keep you warm for seven hours. That's an important one. Also, you can get what's called a thermal blanket. It's really thin, but it folds out and it's foil. So like if you're really tra traumatized and you need to stay warm in a cold environment, It'll trap 99% of your body heat and keep you warm until you get, you know, yeah. Also, I recommend keeping a couple of Vicodin in your med kit just in case. Not recreational Vicodin, which exactly are cool. Very important, not recreational. Yeah, well, you know, if you have to do a recreational, do a recreational. But it's good to have a Vicodin in your med kit. If customs or some of those other assholes stop, you just say it's vitamin C or something. Fuckers don't know shit. Okay. Now, what about, like, say, for different climates, like, say, the Amazon, uh, what, what kind of stuff would you say? Well, the there I take a tooth file All and right. file your teeth sharp and eat the fucking mosquitoes before All they right. eat you. All right. All right. I believe in preemptive strikes with that kind of stuff, fucking mosquitoes. But, you know, I don't, like, the first time I went, my body had to be a chemical repository. You had to have all these fucking shots inside and rub goo all on the outside. It sucked. I think I'd rather have malaria. You know, maybe not, but... <clears throat> So, you know, there I usually take, because um, mosquitoes are attracted to dark clothing and carbon dioxide, they're attracted to your breath. So when I go to the Amazon, number one, I don't breathe for a couple weeks. And I also wear light, gauzy material, right, which covers my body and prevents unwanted chingons from, you know, making those advances that are kind of like, yeah. I mean, he's good looking, with a little mustache, kind of, that's cool. But, you know. <laughs> but the mother, the, you know, the real slobby ones with bad teeth and yeah, all that, you know, forget it. it. No, that's all it. Right. So wear light gaudy clothing, and it helps uh, cotton especially, because you can wash it. You know, when you get all sweaty and stinky from sweating and stinking, you can wash it real good, and it dries out. So time. say, yeah. like, say you want to wash your hair or something, and there's yeah. nothing around. Do you use the, same contain use the same container a lot for different functions, like to... What do you mean, like... Like, to, like <coughs> to drink from, and then you rinse it out. Oh, yeah, know. like my portable collapsible, um, it's a collapsible bowl. A lot of people use them for their dogs or cats to have water in and it comes in, it's really valuable, it's invaluable. Many uses, I mean, sometimes you have to fetch water from a stream. 
Other times, like I was commenting earlier about the shower in this really nice hotel in Peru, the water would barely come out, so I'd just wait to fill up the bowl, kneeled in the bathtub, which was tiled and very elegant, and I just took sort of a, what you'd call a sponge bath. But while I was rinsing off with that, I'd fill it up again, you know, because it took a long time to fill up. It's great. It was invaluable. As well, you can use it as a rain cap, and if it worse comes to worse, and you're in an environment where you really can't get to the bathroom and got to piss all night, you can just fucking piss in the collapsible bowl. Yeah, there you right. go. And you got to wash it out really well afterwards. Correct? Well, you know, that that's a matter of opinion. You know, right. I mean, you know, whatever, man. I don't make any moral judgments about how you wash your dishes. You yeah, know what I'm no, saying? It's, it's got to be correctly yeah. and not that's right. right. I mean, myself, I try to get all the piss out of my bowl. <laughs> yeah. Before. Yeah, I mean, it irritates me if somebody pisses on my dinner plate. Doesn't it? Even me. Uh, yeah. yeah I'm fucked up. So yeah. a collapsible bowl is just a really good thing to have. Sorry. Bandanas are mandatory, all sorts of colors, because bandanas you can use them as a tourniquet. Well, yeah, that's like, well, that's my spider do rag, right? Because yeah. I'm sort of in the squaw mode here. All right. But any kind of just your standard bandana, cotton. Okay, they can be a tourniquet, they can be a wiping rag. I can take a shower and dry myself off with two bandanas. The first one you swab and ring, swab and ring out, swab and ring out. When that's done, you take the second one and dob yourself, and then sort of run around a while. Usually you're going to air out enough. You'd be a little bit tacky, but you throw on your skirt. No pants recommended. They're too <laughs> binding. They're going to fuck you up, cause arthritis in your goddamn knees. I recommend nobody ever wear pants. <clears throat> That's just me. So anyway, uh, and another good thing about bandanas is that, you know, like you get up the next day and you're jonesing for a beer mm -hmm. and you're at a party and you can dump all those old beers and cigarette butts and bugs and shit. You can dump it in a bandana and filter it into your collapsible bowl. There you go. Yeah, the taste is a little raspy, but at least there's no yeah. big chunks. So uh, how many play, how many countries have you have you uh, Oh, I can't even. It's numerous to mention. I don't know. A lot. What are, what are some of your uh, most what's one of your most interesting survival stories from any of these countries? Well, there was a time I was hitchhiking and I got into a lot of trouble, but I'm here and they're not. So, but I can't get into that. Oh. You know, it's a little bit good. All right. But, you That's know, but I still like to hitchhike. But then again, when I was up on Machu Picchu, when I was like romancing one of the guys who cuts the grass, oh. and they don't use. They don't use any noisy shit. They just use sickles and machetes because they don't want all that noise. And it's like the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, you got to paint it, and when you get done, you start painting it again because it's time. Well, they constantly trim all those plateaus and mesas just by hand. Well, I got into, like, chewing coca leaves with these guys, <laughs> right, and just, you know, there's this gorgeous Indian cat. Yeah. Well, the next year when I went back, he had this tiny private spot in the middle of the most touristed spot on Earth, and <clears> nobody <throat> knows about it. And it was great, because when he was fucking my brains out, my head was banging on a rock. And through the trees, I could see that classic Juan peach. You know, you always see mm -hmm. him. In the, yeah, it was just dynamite. But the guy was a kind of a peasant, so I had to cut him off. Ah. I don't know, that's what it was. But it was, it was a good one. Mm -hmm. It was a good view. And nobody else, I mean, you, a billion people walk by this place. They don't even know about it. It's, right in the, it's, like, it's like in the middle of New York City. You have, like, your own little private thing. So that was cool. I bought their whole soccer team shirts. <laughs> yeah, the Ma I sponsored the Machu Picchu soccer team. Hey, That's there bad. you go. Yeah. Well, I guess any any other tips for? <clears throat> uh, live well. <clears throat> Life is short. Be happy. Live well. Spend your money. Have fun. Fuck a lot. <laughs> I'm good. All right. Good Thank job. you, Miss Ruby. You're quite welcome. Cheers. <laughs>